the only activities I've ever been involved in in the gay community were things like bowling leagues and rodeos, things of that sort. Nothing politically active or nonprofit type stuff. This, this is really my first involvement with anything that I consider to be more humanitarian, but it's basically because I found something that I thought was worth devoting a majority of my time to. And it has become a great majority of my time. More, actually, it's become a job. Well, actually, I didn't find the sisters. They found me here, but I saw them first back in the early 80s in San Francisco. When I was at one of the local restaurants on a Sunday morning, and they went roller skating by. That was my first visual sighting of them. But in Las Vegas, uh, Sister Lucy approached me as, along with the other five people that she and Sister Glow were talking to. And I had to think about it for quite a while because it was really a drastic change for me. And at my age, I didn't know if I wanted to start running around in a dress for the first time in my life. It was, it was just a big change in my whole lifestyle. I had, I'd been retired for eight or nine years already and I had my little vacations and my little routines all set out and I really wasn't that involved in much of the community here other than being on the planning council for the Ryan White Party stuff, but that's just minimal things that I could do. Yes, I was the last one when I got yeah, and it's rather appropriate, I guess, that the last sin was sloth. And I got stuck with that. But it's, it's kind of amazing that we've found that the sins that we either chose or got stuck with have been somewhat apropos for our individual personalities, because I'm a great procrastinator. Rather unique, we're the only ones that have a theme as far as our sisterhood members go. We're the only ones that have our own program that we administer. And for being one of the newer houses, we're probably one of the more strict ones as far as our new membership goes. Being a sister is a very difficult process in reality for a lot of people because you have to change your thought processes. You have to learn to sublimate your own ego and change the way you react to people. Uh, it really does require a much more benign personality in a lot of ways. The difficult part for me was actually the gregarious part of the sisterhood. As, as I said, the, the dress thing and high heels and stuff and the, the many nights that I came home and took off my shoes and couldn't stand up because my feet hurt so badly. But that's all been part of the journey, but it really is necessary for a lot of people, especially younger people, to learn how to not react to things that people say to them. And that's really one of the major things you need to learn as a sister is how to not react. I think the provocative names and the outrageous costumes are all part of what we use to attract people, to allow them to talk to us, because it sets us apart from any other groups. People can tell we're not drag queens, we're not trying to look like women, we're not trying to imitate something we're not. I think we're trying to emulate something in a much more theatrical fashion and the gregarious outfits and the behavior seem to first of all break down barriers that people might have about speaking to us because they see us talking to everyone. We don't not talk to people. There is we, we won't avoid people because we're afraid to talk to them, we will go up to any group of people at any time. Unless, of course, it's pretty obvious that they're going to be uh, 
that they're going to object strenuously to us being anywhere near them, but in general, the reception we get is very, very warm, I think. I've always been happy with it. I've never had any major problems, and the few times that I have had extreme comments made, I've been able to negate them just by talking about what it is we actually do. For mocking religion. I'm not mocking religion anyway because to me um, the work that we do is so similar to what is done in the religion I was raised in, which was Catholicism, that the only the major difference is that we don't have to take vows to be celibate and um, we don't have to not get married. <laughs> only the states can regulate that. Um, I basically would have told people before that we feel that the work that we do is very similar to what the nuns we emulate do. We comfort people, we also disturb people, but we promulgate universal joy, which means basically we want to make sure that everyone we come in contact with is happy and joyous. We expiate stigmatic guilt, which means we try to alleviate the guilt that's beaten into people from the time that they're born until they come out to be whatever they may be. It doesn't have to be gay, it doesn't have to be straight, it doesn't have to be anything, it's just whatever they choose to be. That talking to them about what they are from their viewpoint alleviates stress from their perception of themselves, I think. Did that ramble on a little? <laughs>